All right, we're starting a new series. We're going to walk through this book called The Red Sea Rules. The Red Sea Rules. It's a short book, but it's a profound book. And the whole book is just based on Exodus chapter 14. And he has 10 rules that he, that he uses to define how to walk through basically a crisis and some rules. And the first rule is realize that God means for you to be where you are. Realize that God means for you to be where you are. Now, the Israelites had just been let out of slavery, of bondage, where they had been in bondage for 400 years. And, and I always tease people of, about the book of Exodus. I say, if you haven't read it, we have at least seen the Ten Commandments on TV on several occasions, right? If nothing else, you've done that. Well, that's pretty much this story of Exodus chapter 14. Is that. So they had just been set free. And and when they were led out in chapter 13 and 14, it kind of gives you the background. And instead of them going straight to Canaan, God led them out through the hill country because he knew that Pharaoh was going to think that they were going to go by the seaport way. And he did. But he led them through a difficult situation. And sometimes we find ourselves in recovery and in life in difficult situations and bad things happen or unexpected things happen in our lives and it's hard for us to get this first rule and say you're exactly where God wants you to be. Really? I, you, you know, with death or with life or whatever, I was listening to a, to a sermon this week and the, and the preacher said, can God trust you with trouble? Can God trust you with trouble? Will you still be obedient? Will you still be faithful when trouble comes? Because we know, like, like it says in the book of James, that God allows some things in our life to grow us and to mature us, right? He ain't trying to take us out. He's trying to grow up. And so, can he trust you with that? Because I say almost every Saturday that the God we serve is not in the social promotion. We want God to promote us and we want God to bless us. But we can't receive that blessing because we ain't passed that test. Right. And so why would he give me all these things when I'm not ready for them? That's not a good father, right? That's a malicious father. And so if we want this thing called sobriety in these houses and these things, we got to at least pass the first test, those of us who suffer from this disease, is to be able to stop using. That's why I tell people all the time, I was telling a brother that today, you know, so don't come back telling me about jobs and income tax checks and cars. <laughs> we just going to practice on not getting high. Because if I don't get high, I can get the rest of that stuff. I just need to practice that. I don't need all that other stuff. So, Exodus 14, 1 and 2, it says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before Potiphar between Mogal and the sea opposite to baal Zion. That's Exodus 1 and 2. Psalm 77 19 and 20, you made a way through the sea and a path through dry waters. Put your footprints where nothing seen. You led your people like flocks by using Moses and Aaron. That's what the psalmist is just recounting that story that he led them out on dry land. And, and when I was preparing for this, I thought that, that the Red Sea was split and it was all went up at one time and it all came back at one time. But the commentator was saying that as they was going, it was split. And, and when they got through there, as they were walking, when Pharaoh army got in, it just started coming in like that. 
It was a miss. It wasn't just, it just didn't open and they walked through. But over a million Israelites went through there. And, and the Bible says that, that they lined them up like soldiers. And they marched through in lockstep. Isn't that amazing? They went through on dry land also. Absolutely. See, even where the waters were parted. And, you know, this has all been underwater for hundreds of years, you know. He didn't make them wade through the mud to get to the other side. It was dry land all the way from this side to that side. They didn't have to wade through wasting mud or anything like that. Absolutely. So, first one. Look at your paper. It said the first step toward parted water is knowing God either put you where you are or He allowed it. God either put you there or He allowed it. See, sometimes this is a recovery ministry, right? Yes. And so guess what? God either allowed me to have this addiction. We say it's a predisposition, right? It can be. Or he either, either I was born with it, but either way it go, I got it. And he allows bad things to happen to good people. He allows it. And we think that if we get clean, and if we do all of these things right, nothing bad will happen to us. That's why I can't get with that health and wealth and prosperity gospel that people are preaching. Y'all, that's a lie from the pits of hell. You can be doing all that you're supposed to do, and life still shows up. And God allowed it. You know, some of y'all parents, y'all got children here, God allowed you to have that addict that's a child. Some siblings here, God allowed that addict to be a part of your family and all of the destruction that they brought. Some of us booed up with addicts. Some of y'all knew it and thought you were going to love them to sobriety. And some of y'all didn't know. And then they just appeared. And you like, did you lie to me? <laughs> I told my wife, I said, you know, I'm an addict. And I did. I didn't want to lie to her. Because that's a selfish and ugly thing to do to somebody is to not tell them. And I told her also that I could not promise her that I would never use. I could just promise her that I would do what it takes not to use. And the book says, as long as I do that, I won't use. So what I promised her is to continue to work the program and continue to serve and continue to do those things. And then that's all I can promise. So we have to learn that. So God either allowed it, right? Well, he put it there. Whatever your situation is, and we got to learn to trust God. Look at this quote. It says, the sea was before them, Pharaoh hosts behind them, and the mountains are around them, and all this be it observed and ordered by God. God ordered them to be in that situation. For them to be in that exact situation. And knowing that, you know what? That they were going to forget. That's why he kept saying in 13, 13 remember. That's, that's what we tell y'all, remember, remember. And they forgot. Because next week, Ms. Jackson is going to talk about in verse 3, 4, and 5, they started saying that we were better off in slavery. Mm -hmm. And that's what we say when we keep going back. Now, they had been in bondage for 400 years. They were out a hot second before they started saying we were better off in slavery. At least we had graves. At least they know. And what that is, y'all, that's a familiar. And people get comfortable, even in pain, long as it's familiar pain. Yeah. we rather have familiar pain and not knowing what's going to happen next. Because we want predictability. That's what we want. 
That's why we go back. We want to be in bondage. Not literally, but it's familiar, so it's easy. <laughs> that makes sense? Yes. John 16 and 33, it says, I have told you all of this so that you will have peace of heart and mind here on earth. You will have many trials and sorrows, but cheer up, for I have overcome the world. So what, what God is saying here is that, you know what? You're going to have some trouble. Some things going to happen. But I have overcome the world. That is overcoming. See, if I know I got victory, it's a little harder for me to go and fight. See, when you, when you get on now toward the end there, 15, 16, 17, once they get on through, what they had been told was that once they were set free, that they were going into the promised land. See, we got a few spies in here. I was telling the class this, this week, we got a couple of Joshua's and we got a couple of Caleb's in here today. Those are spies. See, what happened was they sent some spies over to see, really, if what God had said was true. And so they came back and gave report. And what they said was, yes, it's a land filled with milk and honey. But it's some giants over there. <laughs> Ain't that something? And so what's a spy? Derek is a spy. Arthur Allen is a spy. They, they spies. They done went into the promised land, and whenever they come back around here, what they letting you know is what God said was in the promised land is in the promised land. But it's some giants over there. Life is going to happen over there. But it's a land filled with milk and honey. We living in houses we didn't build. We drinking from wells that we didn't dig. But we got to fight. That's what a spy, that's what they came back and gave report to. And so you need some spies. And I'm hoping we can get a few more out of y'all. See, we don't need y'all to come back and tell us what it's like out there in slavery because we already know. And y'all y'all come back and say, hey, Robert, no, we already know that. But how is it in the promised land? That's what we trying to get a report on. I don't need no report on bondage. <laughs> I just got out. I was the bill from 92. I remember. <laughs> what I need a report on is what the promised land is like. But God said that once they got over there, y'all, they still had to fight. You want to fight for, for recovery. Not to fight. Now you would think that if he said, I'm going to take y'all from 400 years of bondage. I'm going to take y'all through the Red Sea. I'm going to take y'all through all this other stuff. When you get into the promised land, you ain't going to have to fight. You can just relax. But that ain't how it went. This ain't in there either. But, but this morning when I was up, for whatever reason, I got up this morning about 3.30. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. I guess I couldn't wait to get down there or something. <laughs> So I had to come down here. I started calling people about five something. You know, because I didn't want to, you know, start at five. So I just started calling people about 5.30. But guess what, y'all? We can either live on the promises of God or we'll live off the provisions of God. Let me explain what that is. He had promised them to go into the promised land. But they wandered around for 40 years. Their clothes didn't wear out. Right? He fed them manna from heaven, quails, water from rocks for 40 years. Till they all died out, out of disobedience. And some of y'all just keep going from treatment center to treatment center, to jail to jail. And God is just providing for you, but you haven't experienced the promised land strictly out of disobedience. Don't you want the promises? God provided for them. But all the million of people had to die 
and never got to go over. And it was right there. It wasn't like it was a long ways away. They just didn't get to go. And some of y'all been struggling with this thing called addiction. Some of y'all almost at 40 years are already. Because most of us that smoke crack started, that's around my age, started in 1985. This is 2018. Y'all know I can't count, but that's a whole bunch of years between <laughs> 1980. Somebody didn't count. How many years from 1985 to the day? 33. 33. So it's about you, you, <laughs> you, you, you. Y'all had 33 years just going. God been provided because we done seen y'all about seven times. <laughs> Just rhyme. 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 <laughs> Boy, that's tough living. <laughs> that wasn't in there either. Maybe I got to do the real lesson again when I come back. Because I ain't got to none of this stuff over here. Number two, Christians shouldn't be surprised when they are attacked. Christians shouldn't be surprised when they are attacked. <coughs> See, once we get sober and, and, and we get saved, we get shocked when we're attacked. And I don't understand that. What, what we're supposed to be doing is preparing for battle. It's a fight, y'all. When he sent them over there, he said it was giants over there. They had to fight. They had to fight. And you won't have to fight. You have to work for sobriety. I like how Father Martin, my favorite, he's a king of chalk talk. That people don't listen to him no more. Back then when I got clean, I used to listen to a lot of Father Martin tapes. And he's a Catholic priest. He wasn't no addict. But boy, that brother, just Google him sometime. He's the best I've ever seen. Father Martin, king of chalk talk. But when he talks about relapse, he says that I have to always be on guard for the unguarded moment. I have to always be on guard for the unguarded moment. What that means is I got to keep my dukes up. Because the moment I let my guards down, is when Satan attacks me. And the NA text says the danger to long-term sobriety is to apathy and procrastination. So it ain't that I just got to be attacked by something. The enemy can just lull me into relapse by just letting me make it. You know, because we fight harder when we under attack. See, I used to when read my see Bibles and praying in church was for jail or when the police were behind me. <laughs> I don't need no church, I don't need prayer, and I don't need no Bible when I'm free. That's where I used to live. Cause as soon as I get out of jail, I throw that Bible down. Ain't you know, them lights and. I said, oh Lord, if you just get me out of this room, I go right in the prayer. <laughs> but I ain't prayed since they let me out. They sure ain't gonna go to no church. But every time I got locked up, I went to chapel every time there was chapel. You, you going out to the wreck, Obi? No, I am reading my Bible. <laughs> Perfectly. <laughs> when you get out of Huntsville, they got two big trash cans at the gate. <laughs> Full of items. Yeah. Full of items. Go soon we get out. <laughs> I throw that in there and all them correspondent courses. Well, I took every Bible correspondent course. <laughs> it was. And as soon as they opened them doors, threw that Bible in there. Because I can't be walking downtown and cash my $200 check and went straight over there and bought me a 12 pack of bull. And as soon as the bus got downtown, I went straight to side down. 
and bought me some rocks and showed back up here barefoot. <laughs> Hope that ain't on the tape. <laughs> Let us say, I am here, let me hear it, by God's appointment first. I am in this situation by God's appointment. That God appointed this situation, this time, whatever I'm in. It ain't no accident. Number two. Let us say, I am here in God's keeping. I'm here by appointment, and he's keeping me. That's good news, y'all, that I may be in this situation, but he's with me. He let all of that stuff happen to Job, but he has some parameters around Job. Yeah, he's going to touch his heart. Don't touch and he gave him his stuff back, but he had to go through some things. Yeah. See, it's not that a loving God won't let me go through some things, but the good news is, he's with me. It's so many times over this 25 years of clean time, I done had some dark, dark days in the 25 years. I was talking about my wife a few minutes ago, and, and when, when, I, when she met with the pastor, and the, and the pastor was saying, about relapse, he said, I don't think, I can't promise you he ain't going to fall off, but I don't think that he will, because I've seen this brother walk through some stuff. Yeah, ain't that what he said? He said, he, he don't walk through some stuff. So God kept me through some stuff, but he allowed me to go through some stuff. We say, you know, everybody want a testimony, but the old people say it's called test or money. Mm -hmm. If you ain't went through no, you ain't got no test. You ain't got no story. Got to go through some stuff. It gets even better. Let us say I am here under his training. Let us say I am here under his training. See, he's training me for something. He's preparing me for something. And see, when you're prepared, it gives you a little more confidence, don't it? Mm -hmm. You know, we had a sister that was up for eligibility today, and I was telling her, she was like, I hope I'm going I'm to pass. I said, no, sister, you're going to pass because you're prepared. You better walk up to that table with some confidence because you're prepared. Ain't that, if, only reason you'll be scared is you ain't prepared. And if you're prepared, you don't have to be afraid. You know, we have some earthly intimidations and all of that stuff, but I got to know that, you know what, this situation was appointed by God, right? right. That he's going to keep me through this situation, and he's just preparing me and training me for something else. If nothing else, he just training me to get through it. Not that I'm going to get some big old blessing or anything like that. It's just that I have a story to tell. <laughs> I was sharing the other day. I, I relapsed five times in two years. Five times in two years. Well, that prepared me to be able to help some other people that have fallen off. I have a heart for, for people for chronic relapses because I understand it. Relapse. And I know you can get clean and move on. Yeah. Fourth one. Let us say I am here for his time. See, God has a season for everything. I'm here for his time. When me and my wife first got married, I don't know why this is all this has been on my heart. But we, my first two or three years of marriage, she said, she said, over you and your, you and your wilderness time, you having a, you know, because I just couldn't seem like I couldn't come up. And saying God was just giving me enough to get by 
for that day. So I was used to having a little money, but I couldn't come up, man. My ends wasn't meeting. And I'm like, oh. And she said, well, maybe the reason God ain't blessing us financially is he can't trust you. <laughs> so I started saying, Lord, you can trust me, but ain't nothing changed. Maybe, you know, they say he know my heart. You know, you can trust me, give me some, you know, some green. <laughs> but it wasn't, it took about three years before our situation changed. And family members, because I was in this wilderness experience, this sister was innocently caught up in it with me. Yeah. Ain't that something? Now she said it was me. Now it might have been her in it, and I was the innocent bystander. But she said it was me. <laughs> that was good right there, wasn't it? See how I flipped that? That's funny. I don't care what you say. <laughs> he, said, he says, look at Genesis uh, 45 and 5. It says, but don't be angry with yourself that you did this to me. For God did. He sent me here ahead of you to preserve your life. And we know this story. This, this brother Joseph was thrown into a pit by his brothers, right? This... This brother was sold into slavery. This brother was accused of rape. This brother spent about 12 to 15 years in prison for something he didn't do, different commentators say. And all of that. And he, had, he interpreted some dreams. And he was able to get out and his family came. All of that that he went through was for that time. He said, what Satan meant for evil, God meant for good. And so he wasn't bitter by them people putting him into slavery, putting him in the pit, him going to jail for something he didn't do. He said he accepted that all of that was a part of God's plan. Can you accept the day that all that you have went through was a part of God's plan or he just allowed it? See, he'll use even our disobedience. Mm. To be a blessing to us and he can get glory out of even your disobedience. So, it says, when, what is, what is, I almost wrote that wrong. What well, we have landed in this tough spot, not because the Lord directly led us there, but because we followed our own no. We sometimes cause our own pain. Our problems often result from sheer selfishness and stupidity. What then? That's what I was talking about. See, some things, it's just our own stupidity. I don't know it's a bad word, but have y'all ever done some stupid stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, where you know that, you know what, that wasn't my, that wasn't my brightest moment right there. <laughs> you know. One day, y'all, years ago, I was, this is, don't, don't nobody, I'm going to tell this story, but everybody got a promise not to laugh. You too, Miss Jackson. You too, King. So, I had split the telephone cord, right? And you know how you splice wires? And so, I made a mistake. It stuck the hot side in my mouth to pull the wire. <laughs> they tell me it ain't but 12 volts in the. Y'all promise not to. Man. That wasn't my brightest moment in life. <laughs> wow. Now, church people to make me feel good say, you know what, that's all right, baby. <laughs> but y'all got some, too. You done that? 
she stuck a key in the electrical shop socket. <laughs> Anybody else want to share? <laughs> Free yourself. <laughs> Number three, stop beating yourselves up over this. That's what we got to do is stop beating ourselves up, y'all. 